The frog blinks slowly, considering you with shrewd and beady eyes. After a pointed pause, he opens his mouth, flicking his tongue out to catch an unfortunate fly right from the tip of your boot. Another blowing. And this used to be such a nice neighborhood. Well, where should I start? Lethal plants is pretty high on the list. Not a mention. Kids rampaging in the pool, splashing about doing Lucian knows what underwater, and scaring all the flies away. And then there are the self-styled heroes like you charging in there, thinking they're just gonna cut down that demonic foliage with a slice or two. <laughs> Not likely. You heard me, mister. You're part of the problem. I tell you, I've had quite enough. Quite. <clears throat> with that, the frog turns his back to you with disdain. The spirit of the owl hops heavily from claw to claw, squinting up at you over his bulging, fluffy cheeks. I don't know what just happened, but I do know that I can't taste anything. And that is the worst feeling in the whole world. The owl's eyes go wide and round, as round as his roly-poly body. What? What? No more treats from camp. No more tasty treats. Oh, you know, this and that, little tidbits, hands, feet, and eyeball now and then. Kev always liked me the best. He gave me lots of treats like that. Those others with their fancy names, he never gave them treats like me. Three owls in the enclosure stare you down blankly, fluffing their feathers and blinking in turn. Jimmy, prithee wake thyself. The owl addressed as Jimmy lies motionless on the ground, looking for all the world like he's stone cold dead. Aye, aye, back thyself up, Jimmy lad. We are blessed with a visitor. Spying some blood on Jimmy's beak, you pry it open to investigate. Inside, you see a human finger. A few sharp tugs, and you've pulled a severed human hand loose, partially pecked. You don't need to be a genius to surmise that Jimmy choked on his dinner. Sir, sir, quit thy poking and prithee leave yon Jimmy alone. 
Our lad will ruffle up his feathers in his own sweet time. Deceased? Buncom. Sweet Jimmy is just resting his eyes. Sir must be aware that one often needs a small nap after a large dinner. And Jimmy just ingested a banquet. Ken! Ken! Lord Ken! Finest paladin in all the land! Right, Jimmy? A beak never goes empty for long in Kem's house. Jimmy! Jimmy! What is it we do? Oh, blast and bother, Jimmy! Show some civility to our esteemed visitor, won't you? Jimmy remains dead, uninterested in answering petty questions about the world of the living. As you gingerly pack the rotting appendage in your backpack, you have occasion to wonder, not for the first time on this journey, what in the void am I doing? Fare thee well. We'll tell Jimmy you stopped by. I'm pecking the seed. I'm pecking the dirt. But I still can't taste anything. You slink through Kem's mansion with the alacrity that comes with years of thievery. You arrive in the garden unseen and lay your eyes on the pool. It's just as you hoped. The pool is dry. You enter the basin and reach for the hatch. But a shadow looms over you. A paladin. You smile. You have a story ready for this very situation. Yet, when you open your mouth, no words spill forth. A blade swings and your hand hits the ground with a thump. Three owls in the enclosure stare you down, Black. Jimmy! Frick. The owl addressed you. Aye, aye. Mom! Mom! Deceased? Mom must be aware that... Fare thee well! The weather-beaten war owl salutes you with one wing. Looking closer, you can see a telltale scratch on her left claw. This is the war owl who delivered your message from the paladin camp. Sir, you sent me from the meadows near Driftwood. Caroline Fluffinster at your service, sir. Wherever the whistle calls me, sir, though no doubt with the war preparations the way they are now, I'll be called up to the front lines, sir. 
that I have, sir. Thank you, sir. Bred and trained for service I am, sir. And proud to be some help, sir. The owl bows before you with an outrageously over-the-top flourish of her feathered wings. <laughs> the elegant owl mistress glances up at you from her papers, a harried look on her face. She nods an abrupt greeting. Yes? Can't you smell the fine aroma of owl shit? This is the Owlry, Lord Kem's communications link with the rest of Rivalon. Right now, I'm sending my fluffy friends to mobilize paladins to readiness. War is imminent. But Lord Kem's a good leader, a good man. He'll protect us. I'm sure of it. I suppose he sent you for the latest news? I doubt it. That's probably just Jimmy taking a nap, that fat owl. He eats a lot. Poor lad hasn't been able to fly properly in months. Lord Kem feeds him too many treats. And who am I to stop him? Rivalon's a big place, darling. And all of it in a shambles. Where exactly do you want to know about? We haven't heard anything from Fort Joy in a good long time. Ever since a group of renegade sorcerers escaped killing Bishop Alexander in the process. I'm no fan of Magisters, not anymore. But I can't help but think that Alexander's death was unfortunate. Dallas is only making everything worse. I intercepted some Magister communications from there a while ago. Seems like their Voidwoken problems have decreased lately, but they're not quite sure why. They're preparing for war with the Divine Order, with all three houses riled up in a frenzy. The House of Dreams are communing with dead warriors. The House of Lore are drawing up new maps for after the war. And the House of War? Well, the House of War are in their element. The biggest news of the Dwarven Queendom is usually the location of the Queen. And guess what? Queen Justinia is here in Arcs. She's staying right here in Lord Kem's mansion. Good luck out there. You'll need it. We all will. The flower is withered. You bend to smell the bloom, but it has no discernible scent. The moment you finger the silky flower, icy darkness pierces your heart. The chill freezes your bones, then rushes free, leaving a single word etched within you. God woken. The doctor makes no deals. An inscription at the terrarium's base identifies its contents as a wailing mandrake, a species you've not heard of before now. Not every detail is visible through the terrarium's hazed glass, but there is no missing the plant's trumpet-like blooms, perfect for catching raindrops or insects, perhaps. My word, the 
the mansions positively overrun with foreign folk on this most inauspicious of Lucian's days. He catches himself and scrapes his throat in a brief moment of embarrassment. <clears throat> I do apologize if I came across as impertinent just now, and I hope you'll forgive my unabating boldness when I assume Sir has come... What are you suggesting? Why, I am no horticulturalist. If you've questions about the species in Lady Kem's collection, you must speak with her yourself. Yes, do please excuse me, for I have a party of dignitaries to attend to. They have an appetite for an aperitif, and the port, needless to say, does not pour itself. Why Daddy wouldn't let me play with that cat? Why does he get to have all the fun? Come out, screen. come out, wherever you are. I'll talk to my husband. <laughs> well, hello again. Oh, but you seem to be a bit feverish. Violent plants, that's simply impossible. Those seeds were a gift from the doctor himself. As exotic as these symptoms you've presented with, I dare say. Perhaps you should see him, dear. Something is clearly ailing you. Do be careful not to break anything, good sir. I set my course far on the map. I want no trouble from you. This job is dull, and I'd like to keep it that way. Lady Kem has been kind enough to host me until I can return to the kingdom. She is a gracious host, even in these trying times, and has taught me much about tea. Master Kim, I did. Uh, I could have sworn it was another man in a master suit, but it weren't. N -n now I'm in the doghouse, like the human say. Help it! I swear, it came all smelled like when the garden man cuts down a decayed tree, like like he was using flowers to hide the rots. <laughs> Only nudging and tail wag the next time. I promise. Uh, no licking, though. Uh, I don't want to taste the rot again. Tragedy befell us at the consulate, but at least Lord Kem offered us pleasantries and protection. He's one of the few truly honorable souls left in this city. The lizard consulate is gone. 
All that survives of it is what I managed to take with me. Care to see what I have? Perhaps we can make an arrangement. Best to sell anything of value. The voice of the ancient empire must still be heard in arcs, and that will require gold. It was quite terrible and wonderful. Slaughter. Death. Opportunity. We were gathered there in anticipation of Lucian's day, when suddenly the ground shook, monsters howled for blood, and fires raged around us. Many a great name perished in that sudden hell. As for myself, I'm glad I survived long enough to collect what treasures I could. Surely you might find something useful among them? Oh, it was devastating, to be sure. But what good does mourning do for either the living or the dead? I found a spot of fortune in the flames. It would be wrong to squander it, yes? Our consulate may be gone, but I will not let us be reduced to utter beggars. I merely do what is necessary to fund our ongoing diplomatic efforts. My word, the Red Prince. A moment of your time, please, Your Majesty, if you can spare it. What say you? Have we time to spare? Very well. By all means, milady. Speak. It's about Sadha, my prince. I met her in our Empire's consulate here in the city. She is pregnant with your offspring, but in mortal danger as well. Voidwoken swarmed the consulate. Flames engulfed all. But even then, the dreamers stood by her and tried to take her into the Sanctuary of Dreams. Go to her, Your Majesty. Find her and safeguard her. For her sake. And that of your children. Yes, by all means, let us partake in the art of conversation. Yes. I think she's a mad woman. She was there in Fort Joy and she's here still in Arx. Yet what does she speak of after all she's been through? Nothing but death and domination. She has learned nothing, but I have. Live and let live, I say. Thus endeth the lesson. Last I heard, Godhood awaits, if only we can wrest it from Dallas. First, we find her. Then, we roll for the greatest fate of them all. The man and the elf keep their voices to a discreet level, but it's impossible to miss the tension between them. They're arguing. What more to convince you? More void woken? A plague? An earthquake? Arx is doomed! Our future is elsewhere! 
Pharaoh, come on. Where's this elsewhere that's better than Ox? This is the greatest city in the world. I'll leave it over my dead body. Exactly. Your dead body. My dead body. This place is dead. We can be together anywhere. They fall into a sullen silence, really? neither of them willing to give in. Keep out of this. This is not a good time. Please leave us. The divide, stranger, I implore you, turn back. There is naught within but black ash and void. The consulate lies in ruin. Accursed flames lap at every corner. The paladins are great and faithful warriors. But some tragedies even they can't undo. I'm sure it's a tale you've heard before, and I'm sure it has the same twist. And then there were Void Woken. A few lizards managed to escape to Kem's estate. The rest. <sighs> they were consumed by cursed flames. Yes, I bore witness to your feet at the gates. Your skills have proven invaluable to Arx, but I'm afraid the terrors waiting within the consulate aren't so... tangible. The priestess's eyes glaze over, and she shivers in fear. You'd have to be mad to continue. And if you managed to escape, you'd be madder still. I can't say more. Funny how it's our consulate that's burning, isn't it? Mark me. The ancient empire does not forget. It has a certain beauty. The paladins are saying the magisters did this. To think we trusted them. and tore down the consulate's barricades like they were paper. I pray that Solstice keeps the Empire safe from the void. I barely escaped the consulate with my life. No thanks to the Order's supposedly elite paladins. Rage, yet the paladins are powerless to quench them. Utterly useless. The consulate's in shambles. Are the paladins just going to stand around while the city burns? This is no ordinary fire. Water has no effect. Better to just contain it until it dies down. Do you mean like pestering magisters while arcs are Careful! Sinks into this fire's of the void! Infernal stuff! can't be put out by normal means. Best to wait it out. It'll have to die eventually. Voidwoken. Arx used to be safe from those things. Not anymore. The lizards inside the consulate never stood a chance. It's all the bloody Magister's fault. They can have the dead to their butcher's bill. Because they're collaborating with a black ring. It's no coincidence that those monstrosities appeared just as we confronted them about their betrayal. At least Lord Kem's putting a stop to them now. By all means, but if you run into trouble, don't expect me to stick my neck out to help you.
A single rage-wrought thought rolls from the dead lizard's spirit. Those magister bastards.
You are a spy at the consulate when a source at the Paladins delivers a bombshell. News of a Magister Black Ring conspiracy. When the Void Woken come, you believe it is part of a dark Magister plot. You see a party of nobles racing from the Void Woken onslaught. Among them, a comely lizard, scales of red. They don't run away from the consulate, but further inward. That didn't escape. Then she must still be inside.
the spirit turns her gaze upon you. Her eyes blaze with cool disdain. Alert and focused, this spirit is not lost. Not lost at all. She tilts her head, resisting your intrusion. No sooner do you catch hold of a memory than she snatches it back again. Void woken attacking. A rush to protect the dreamers. A death as the dreamers escape. The spirit resists. She bombards you with memories of everything but the dreamers and to where they escaped. Visions of life at the consulate assail you. The taste of the food at official receptions. The laughter of children playing out in the gardens. The warm sun on your skin as you walk by the water. The burgeoning sadness as you realize that life is dead. The vision appears. The dream is escaping out through the garden and into a pool. A figure accompanies them, an elegant female kin with the reddest of skin. of the Seven lie hidden in this... Of course, Sadha continues to play hide-and-seek as well. More than anything, I long to find her. Zol Stissa, the Lizard God. The artist has certainly captured her arrogance.
The spirit howls in excruciating agony, trapped in the moment of her death. The Void Woken are attacking, the Dreamers are escaping, and she is burning alive. Your touch draws her out of the endless pain. The Void Woken are gone. The Dreamers have escaped through the pond. And although she still trembles, a new look has appeared in her eyes. Hope. She embraces you in gratitude, sobbing in relief. As the tears flow, her spirit dissolves in your arms, and she leaves for the Hall of Echoes. Scathed. The spirit doesn't speak, but instead stretches his arm backward, an unseen weapon clasped in his ghostly fist, and moves to strike. The lizard is not of flesh. Yet you feel the weight of his arm as it collides with your palm. In an instant, you are no longer you, but him, crouched low and concealed in shadow. Panic shouts ring through the air, but you must not allow yourself to be distracted. Your eyes remain on your quarry, a female lizard, scales burning red, clad in opulent garb. You remain 20 silent steps behind her as she flees into the consulate garden where a shimmering portal of opal and pearl illuminates the pool beneath. Finally, the opportunity has come. She is as good as dead. You flit into a cluster of tall shrubs and ready your dagger. But she has already stepped through the portal, leaving you alone in this unlikely oasis. You step out of cover and reach to the portal. What awaits beyond it? Alas, you will never know. Nor will you know whose sword it was that plunged into your back in that moment. It isn't the blade's pain that hurts most, but the pain of the failed assassination that most disturbs you as you slip into darkness. And the pain is gone. You are you again. The spirit drops his arm to his side, dejected. You see billows of golden sand stretching beyond the walls and worlds that roll across the portal's surface. It isn't clear if the portal allows return travel, but you're inclined to doubt it. The Red Prince cocks his head, then peers into the portal more closely. You follow suit, 
and notice a spot of red beyond the sandy swirls that you missed before. I see destiny. We must enter. There's no time to waste. I've heard of such portals. They're rare creations of the House of Dreams, leading to planes where dreams manifest as reality. After you.